Hello everyone, I'm RecV5. And I am Sandman99. And welcome back to Fallout 4 G9-13 playthrough. Yes, and in the last episode, we uh, pretty much finished off all the stuff that can be done in Nuka World. Indeed. And uh, my apologies to one of our regular viewers. I apparently missed a uh, terminal. Oh, did you? In... Uh, Brad Burton's like office. Maybe we can stop by there and have a quick look. Sure, what the hell? Because apparently there was some... Oh, look, somebody just gave me some whiskey. Uh. Um, apparently there was a... Uh, I just came over here because off-camera I was doing a little bit of settlement management. Yeah. You know, giving settlers jobs. and. Well, and then the settler just reached out with his uh, Mr. Fantastic arms and... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Gave you some whiskey. Yeah. Anyway, um... Yeah, I was just giving people settlers jobs and planting crops and, you know, the, that kind of thing. Oh, now I'm tired. Hey, there's a dead guy right here. Oh, okay. That was from the uh, vampire that uh, tried to attack me last night. Now I'm hungry and I'm tired? Wow. What shall we have? Well, can I have some vodka melon? Uh, no, I'm saving that. You're gonna save that one? Well, yeah, because that one gives me a buff to, uh, um, to strength. Yep. So, uh, you know, like if I happen to be almost over encumbered. I which... see it also corrects your intelligence. <laughs> yeah, and it makes me more charismatic, too, just in case you didn't notice that. Yep. Yeah. Okay, well... We'll have some iguana on a stick. There we go. Because we all know how tasty iguana on a stick is. Yeah, it's sludge on a stick. <laughs> and then I guess we will... Uh, before we leave Nuka World here for good, we'll pop in at the... Uh, Brad Burton office here. And uh, we'll see if we can find this terminal that I apparently missed. All right. Maybe it was just some uh, entries on that one terminal in the office there that I sort of glossed over. I don't know. I really don't know. There's oh, bound to be there's, a few. There's a. Uh, 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 Ewe's Playhouse are playing in the background again. Yes. Yep. Okay, so here's a, a terminal. Brad Burton's terminal. Okay. So, uh, Nuka World Mail System. Outgoing mail. Just wanted to reach out and say thank you for the work you've done on my private sanctuary with the installation of the control switch. Work is finally complete. Amusing antidote to share about the final day. Engineers needed to know where to place the access switch. Obviously, I wanted it concealed, but where? The answer came to me. It should be placed near my greatest creation. The very reason for my success. I think we can both... Okay. This is a hint as to where I could find the switch uh, to open the bookcase, right? Yep, yep. Yeah. Incoming mail. I've cleared your schedule as you requested for the latter half of the entire year. Uh, your medical records have been transferred to Braxton's team. All of the backup copies destroyed. I hope you know what you're doing. If you go through with this process, you may never be able to speak in public again. I think that's probably accurate statement. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we can certainly work around that, but your presence has been driving force behind Nuka Cola Corporation since the beginning. I think it would be a great loss if that were to change. Okay. I guess this is a. Uh considered your proposal for shutting down Galactic Zone to oversaw Hall Star Control mainframe and robots, and I have to say that I am taken aback by the such suggestion. 
If there's one thing I've taught you, it's that no matter how tough things get, we never give up. Tell the manager over there, he'll just have to hunker down and make do with what he has. I've poured billions into that park, and I'm not about to watch it trickle away by closing the gates. As far as disarming the robots in the park, that's also a no. If things go south at Nuka World, that force of robots is the only protection we have. Cooperating with Robco was the only way I could get that type of weaponry out allowed outside of a military base, so suck it up and get whatever his name's ass moving over there to fix this problem. Okay. This sounds like, uh... Not the thing we were looking for, I think. Right? That is, you requested and informed all security of personnel about our problems with this AFAD group. Right? The uh, Friends of Animals or something? Yep. Basically the equivalent of uh, PETA here or something? Yep. Yeah. Uh, we're doing the best we can to keep them as far away from Safari Adventure as possible, but we're understaffed. I need every man and woman I can get. But you've assigned 12 of my people to Project Cobalt and have yet to replace them. Any help is appreciated. Have a wonderful day. Okay, this must be a reply to him. Oh, I've started reviewing the hidden Cappy contest details and I have a question, so I actually have to receive the contest winners in my office in person. If so, have you considered how Project Cobalt could affect that idea? I'll do it for now, but we have to revisit the issue once my transfer is complete. Anyway, I promise you I will submit the rest of my comments and changes this week. I'm too preoccupied with Project Cobalt, and I've definitely put it off for too long. Don't worry, Peyton, if I take any longer. Just tell the marketing team to come after me with the torches and pitchforks. Mm. Uh. Okay. From Kate Levitt. I appreciate your enthusiasm over the quantum beverage idea, but I really think we should run more tests before we send it out to market. The isotope that we're using is strontium-90, which is extremely radioactive. It's perfect for the military's applications, but even with Rex's purification distilling process, it can still be dangerous. Now I know the bright blue bottles will look wonderful on store shelves and we stand to make a lot of money with this product, but think of the long-term effects it can have. We already know it causes the imbiber's urine to glow, <laughs> and while others in the beverager lab find that amusing, I find, it some I find something like that coming out of my body disturbing. I have a battery of tests I'd like to perform before we re release the project to the Washington DC test market. All I ask is a six to eight month delay. Okay. This is probably the, uh... The no. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely love the Nuka condolences, fruit, and cheese baskets you sent out to the families of our early prototype quantum flavor testers. Great idea. I think I love the fine print of the health damage waiver you had them sign before they joined up even more. Saved us billions, I suspect. You're at the top of your game, Peyton. Maybe someday you'll be sitting in the big chair. For now, enjoy that shiny new quantum blue Corvega that you found parked in your driveway this morning. You earned it. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess we'll have to uh, take the elevator back Yeah, down. there was another terminal down here, too. Was there another terminal downstairs? Yeah, the one in the back office there. Oh. So I don't know if it, it would be that one that the viewer was referring to. You know the one. Uh, no, I don't. I think you might have even accessed it. Uh, you just might have skimmed over it or something. Oh, it's in here? No, it's like uh, in back of the room. Oh. On the left. Well, that's not the left. Sierra is still, oh, back here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, here. Okay. Okay, LeapX system remote. Okay. Acquisitions. Okay, this... Yeah, I think this, we, we did look at this part. Yeah, we did look at this part. Okay. Project Cobalt. Okay. General Braxton dropped by my office today. I already know he was coming. My contacts in Washington, D.C. saw to that. He asked for exactly what I expected. Use of Nuka World's beverages for a military chemical and weapons program. I told him I'd do it if he gave me information on the military's LeapX program. The look on his face when I asked that was priceless. As he expected, he said yes. The moment LeapX data arrives, I'm putting a team to work on it right away. Okay. I had vault Tech modify my personal vault to accommodate the machinery required to keep the LeapX system running. Costing a fortune, but I have 
and I've had to divert money from the amusement park, but who cares? My money and the park won't be worth anything when the world is a smoking ruin. I've flown a few of Leafex's researchers down here to make sure the prototype works. I bet they're glad they still have a job, seeing as how all the military's money got diverted to wartime resources. I'm hearing complaints from my Nuka World team about the cutbacks, but they'll just have to make do. Uh, Meacham's work with product Cobalt stuck, struck gold. His team came up with a, a custom isotope based on Trondium-90. He's calling Quantum. He thinks he could use the isotope to weaponize almost anything in the military's arsenal. He has come up with a few prototypes like the Nuka Nuke, and we've even used the Quantum to enhance one of the military's power armor suits. Ironically, Meacham believes we can use this isotope somewhat safely as an ingredient in a new Nuka-Cola soft drink flavor. Huh. By reducing most of the harmful effects of the isotope, the Quantum will actually glow longer than the ingredients we used in Quartz and Victory. In fact, I've told Meacham to start distilling it immediately and call it Nuka-Cola Quantum. Okay, the in original intention of Leapex was to create a living bio suit to preserve my body after it would normally expire, but now I've been told by those idiots on the Leapex team that's not possible. Leapex requires so much power and so many special components, it can only, co it can only accommodate no more than 15 pounds of organic matter. That leaves me no choice. If I want to prolong my life, I'll have to have them preserve only my head. I've told them to proceed. I haven't come this far to give up. Okay. This is my final entry. Today I'll be undergoing the surgical procedure to have my head removed and transferred into the LeapX system. If anything should happen, I've instructed Peyton Huxley, my executive assistant, to handle my affairs. Peyton is the only one outside the LeapX team who knows about this procedure, and I am entrusting him to visit me daily and keep me informed of events happening outside of my vault. Well, okay. I guess that didn't happen. No, so well, well, I guess that there wasn't really a whole lot uh, of specifics on the Project Cobalt in that terminal. You know, like as to what kind of weapons were made and that kind of thing. Yeah, it's funny, you know, that they didn't have a way to put him into a sentry bot or something, kind of like... Uh, I guess I'll be heading home soon. Well, I guess the that robo was... The robo-brains? Well, left. yeah, like the robo-brains, right? Like you, they, they were able to... Well, of course, those robo brains didn't remember being people, right? Yeah. So. Whereas he does, he remembers everything about himself. Yeah. So it must be a more complicated process. Maybe it is. But anyway, okay. There, you can still hear. <laughs> yeah, through through multiple floors of concrete bunker. Yeah, that would be enough to drive anybody insane after two hundred years, eh? There you go. Now you know why he wanted to die. Yeah. Because he just doesn't want to hear that anymore. Okay, I don't think there's any other terminals in here. Anything at the desk? Any? Uh, on the right there? Um, nope. nope. Just the radio. Just the radio. With uh, Pee Wee's Playhouse. Okay, well. I uh, guess that's it for that. We uh, went and had a look, and uh, hopefully that will uh, clear things up a little bit. Indeed. So we're going to head back to the Commonwealth now and see if I can remember where I left Ada. I think I left Ada at the Cambridge Red Rocket, actually, if I remember right. <clears throat> so you were telling me that you were having a discussion with one of your uh, acquaintances about climate change today. I was, and I think I'm not going to disclose any details about that in any kind of uh, publicly recorded video whatsoever. Uh, okay. <laughs> I was just trying to start some uh, Yes, no, I, I, I for sure wish to uh, uh, keep away from that kind of thing in public recordings. Okay. 
Well, pardon me for bringing it up. Oh, it's all good. It just amused me when you told me about it. Oh, yeah. Anyway, I guess uh, here we go. We're going to take the train back to the Commonwealth for one last time. Any visits that I make here in the future will probably be off camera just to maintain settlements because these settlements are still growing and haven't reached their, uh, you know, like maximum population yet. Indeed. Going up. Nuka Express. Please stand clear of the doors. See, I still think it's funny how when you first throw that switch, the train doesn't start off by, like, moving. You kind of, like, get, like, dragged by the train. Uh-huh, yeah. For the first little bit. Yeah, well, the, uh, hair physics and everything else is kind of funny in here, too, right? Like, here, like uh... any children and Yeah, the game has difficulty handling moving vehicles. Yeah. Yeah, like, your hair blows straight out as if you're, uh in like a 40 mile an hour wind kind of thing. It's probably just because they didn't uh, plan for that kind of functionality in, a, in this engine. Yeah. I was actually surprised to see hair physics when I first uh, you know, like played this game back when it first came out. Yep. <clears throat> I don't remember when hair physics were even introduced into Bethesda games. Was this the first one? I think this was the first one, yeah. It's not something that someone like me typically notices anyways. You know, first person disembodied hand and all. Yeah. Yeah, I think, well, in order to get, like, there were, there are mods for Skyrim. That you know, I'm not one or more anyway. That introduce hair physics if you really, really want to have them in Skyrim. Um, I tried one of them out briefly, actually, and what I found was that uh, the hair physics was all well and good, but there was no uh, collision between the hair and the body. Yep. So you would, you know, like crouch like this, and then your hair would clip <clears throat> through your body, and your hair would clip through your body, right? And it does a little bit here, too, with this, but, uh, you know, like, I guess that's just one of those things that hasn't been quite perfected yet, where, you know, like, there should be, if you're going to have the hair physics, you should have some collision with the body so that when you uh, move and, uh, you know, crouch or change positions or whatever, the, the hair will rest on your back and shoulders rather than clipping through your body. I wonder, though, too, if it, perhaps it's actually something like uh, the engine doesn't have the capability built in to even detect collision between the hair and the body or something like that. I have no idea. I know absolutely nothing about the technical ins and outs of this, so... It may be such a thing. Possibly. But hopefully, uh, in the next game maybe they'll have oh it's this guy again oh <laughs> okay wow he didn't even give me a chance to talk nope that's okay fuck that guy anyways yeah <laughs> Far, we're out of our 
out of our way. I was thinking we could stop by. Yeah, maybe we should. We could stop by uh, um, the Starlight Theater or, or drive in there and see. Pick if, up some ammo. See if our uh, ammunition machine has made any more ammunition here. Well, it'd be kind of awkward to play this game if you don't have any bullets, you know. Yeah. Unless you're a melee type, I guess. What I found, though, is that this game in particular, it's difficult to play as a... Uh, melee character? Well, 100% melee character without any uh, you know, firearms or things like that. Because when you're looking at a, a situation where you're... Oh, see, I'm about to run out of time to complete my objective for the Kingsport Lighthouse that I can't complete. Because it's not completable. Anyway, um, if you're badly outnumbered, you know, like five, four or five or six to one outnumbered, uh, you don't necessarily want to just rely on melee attacks. Because okay, you well, get shot to pieces. Yeah. Made some more 45 rounds. It looks like it's still making more yet. Yeah, how many do you got now, anyways? Um... 511. So I guess I've got lots. Well, that's not bad. <clears throat> oh, now I need a drink of water. Oh, there's a water pump right there. Some of these settlers range quite a long ways outside the settlement. This one here is probably a guard, right? Yep. But they uh, tend to wander around. Especially at, at the drive-in there, for some reason. They, they'll they wander around well outside the borders of the settlement, eh? <clears throat> well, you know what, though? That's probably part of what keeps the roads so damn safe now. Although, safe roads is kind of bad for you, because it means less loot. Well... quick check here and make sure we don't have anybody that's hmm. there everybody no one employed everybody has a job maybe we should grab uh, okay grab a couple hundred caps out of the thing there uh, everybody's good to go here Yes. Yeah, I think that the hair collision with thing is actually a pretty difficult thing to do because, uh, uh, like I may have mentioned before, I've been playing a bit of uh, Baldur's Gate 3 recently, and that's a pretty recently made game. Is just and it's very well made, like it looks really good and everything, but there still is a little bit of hair clipping into outfits, like through collars of, of armors and that kind of thing. Yep. So, uh, you know, I'm just thinking that maybe that is a, a difficult issue for almost everybody, right? Probably. Well, let's see if I remembered correctly here. Ada. There. Okay, well that's one way to find her very easily. Let's yeah, and I guess you could give her some upgrades before you head out, too, if you need yeah. to. Well, see, I could give her the Mr. Handy Torso. So that she doesn't get stuck on shit? Yeah. Hydraulic frame, hydraulic frame, I think that's the highest level of armor. Already. Give her a miscellaneous, uh... Yeah, sure. I think we'll, uh... We'll give her Tesla coils. 
And then the left arm. Looks like we can upgrade the left arm armor. Right? Okay, so she's got that claw. It looks like if we improve it to a construction claw, we can improve that damage a bit. Left hand drill does even more. 406. Hmm. Stealth blade. Wow. Okay. Those do a lot of damage. Yeah, they do. Well, that's why those robots that have this, the blade arms are so dangerous, right? Yep. Because I think that that 535, that's the highest one so far. 556, left hand hammer saw. Right? Left minigun. Nuka cherry launcher. <laughs> Nuka quantum launcher. The hammer gun thing does even more damage than some of these that do, right? Yep. Explosive minigun. Okay, let's go with the hammer saw thing. And the uh, right arm. Okay, there is only right arm factory armor. Hmm. Okay. The sentry arm is the highest grade thing that there is. What do you have on the other arm? Sentry arm. Okay, right hand laser. So the right hand laser. Okay. Um <laughs> I can't tell here if uh this is changing anything here or not. Okay, the lower number is changing, right? So that must be uh, whatever the right hand is. Like the top number under damage must be the left hand. Right? Yep. And the bottom number will be the right hand, right? So right hand laser does 42. So that's not really that impressive. I wonder if you can get a right hand Gatling laser though, which was one of the options at the very bottom. Yeah, that's what I was going to look at here, is maybe we could do that. Ooh, okay, right hand minigun, right? Right hand Nuka Cherry Launcher. Hmm. They are explosive, though. Yeah, fires nu explosive Nuka Cherry projectiles, yeah. Okay. You know what? I think that the right hand Gatling laser gun is probably. But what what's the uh, unstable one? That one uh, may break when used. Ah, uh, okay. So we don't want that. Even though that does a small amount more. Right? Same thing with that. Yep. I think that we'll go with the right hand Gatling laser. Okay. Thruster arm! Okay, we can add. Mr. Handy Thruster Arms. Right? They apparently give her another source of damage, yeah. too. Yep. Yeah. We'll put... The highest grade armor on those. Okay, middle hand. We can go with a pincer or a saw. a saw. Go with the saw. Okay, left hand. Pincer, saw, or saw. And right hand. Saw. <laughs> okay, legs. Okay, Mr. Handy Thruster. Uh, we already got frame. the highest level armor on that, and that's it. So I guess this is the ultimate Ada, right? Apparently. Yeah, I know. I know you really like the thruster. Uh, uh, well, that's because when I sprint, uh, Ada can keep up, right? Yeah, and she won't get stuck on things. Yeah, the the um, 
other like the the other one is that's not too bad is the assaultron legs because they can run fast. Yep. But Ada, would you like me to go with you? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Time to hit the road. Understood. Please lead on. Okay. Yeah. See, I just lost my uh, lone wanderer perk. Yep. Right. Time is it here anyway? Five thirteen p.m. So now, what are we doing here? We're going to be. Okay, we can't do that anymore because the railroad HQ is underwater, right? Um. Oh, did we not do everything there? Oh, look, we missed one park medallion. We missed a park medallion. Damn. Okay. Well, That'll I'm not sure what those even do. But this here, General Atomics Factory. Maybe we'll go back. After this episode, we'll go back to Nuka World and we'll... Because uh, I know where the Ferris Wheel is. That's in uh, the uh, Kitty Kingdom, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So obviously we missed one thing. We got one small thing that needs to be looked after. But in the meantime, we'll go and do this since we already... Came along here and went to start to do this. Yeah, and already decided to do this. Not many doctors around. Yeah. Got a few, uh... Ugh. <sighs> okay, I'm not sure what those park medallions do if you collect them all. But I guess we'll find out next time. So what's the easiest and quickest way to get to way over here? Cross that bridge. Probably, yeah, following along the freeway here. Right? Yeah, if you just go straight, you'll be able to cross that bridge and get there. Yeah, see that with the uh, Mr. Handy thruster uh, legs, Ada can keep up, right? Yep. Wow, time to eat again already. It's always time to eat. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, well, uh, you think I have another rad scorpion egg omelet? Sure. All right. Cross the bridge, and then you want to take a left, I think. No, we'll uh, we'll head down to the Boston Red Rocket, and then follow the uh, the freeway. Road follower. Hey, the freeway is like a main travel thing, right? A travel thing. A travel it's thing. A, main... a, free... a freeway is a travel thing. Yeah, it's a main travel route. That's what it says when you look it up in uh, one of the dictionaries. Yeah, well, you what can I say? Pick your favorite brand. You look I'm, up freeway, I'm, and I'm I'm slowly, you know, losing my mind <laughs> to dementia, I guess, and I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm having a harder time lose using my words. That's okay. <clears throat> it's probably just those squats and deadlifts again. And yeah. you didn't have pie today. I didn't, but I'm gonna have pie later. I've got to go and do my. Uh, work out here first before I eat pie. That's the problem. Well, the problem is that I can't digest the pie. Yeah, you know? it, it gives so, you a whole bunch of heartburn and shit. So I right? have, I'd rather work out on a more or less empty stomach. Wow, I was moving so fast it took a bit to, for that to all draw in. See? It's still drawing in. It's still drawing in. Come on, you can do it. Ooh, yeah, there we go. 
that's one of the drawbacks to sprinting everywhere. I think sometimes you can Man, outrun the uh, game's ability the cell loader, to, yeah. Yeah, to, to load things in, right? Well, because you are using mechanical hard drives inside this thing, too. Yeah. And you're moving much faster than the game ever anticipated that you normally would. Well, for more than uh, very brief periods, anyway. That's right. right. Okay, well. Just got a couple of hundred caps there. We have a computer terminal around here somewhere, too, if I could just remember where I put it. <clears throat> you know, you should standardize your settlements. You put your computer terminals in a standardized place where you can always remember oh, where they there, are. There it is. Maybe someday. <laughs> Problem is that I always uh, try different things. Like, I, I'll never build this particular settlement exactly the same way twice. Yep. You know? Yes, you don't have the degree of methodicism that I have, where I would build, like, the exact same type of building every single time. That auto-close gate hadn't closed. Probably just script leg. Mm -hmm. Okay, well... Let's see if any raiders have respawned in here. Doesn't look like it. That jet respawns all the time, though. I've never lost anyone before. This failure is new to me. But all of this stuff tends to respawn all the time. So I guess there's nothing down here to shoot. Hey, Adia, where are you going? She can't path properly. Oh, apparently. there you are. <laughs> she teleported. Yep. Sometimes this, these, they, these things are so weird, eh? Hey, the man, way, it just works. The way that they work. I'm gonna grab that oil canister. Maybe she just wanted to go after that oil canister. Maybe. I almost forgot, too. I've got to go and do this, too. Yeah. I, Disable I the tripwire and then every single time I come by here, right? Grab the grenades. Yeah. How many grenades would you have if you were still carrying around all of the ones that you'd picked up from this? I probably wouldn't be able to carry that many. Because I'd be over encumbered. <clears throat> it's too bad you can't load those grenades into a launcher. <laughs> yeah, they don't that's one one weapon that they don't have in Fallout 4 is the grenade launcher. This issue needs to be rectified. I think that it, there were mod makers that have made them. A lot of Fallout New Vegas weapons eventually found their way into uh, Fallout 4. Through mods. Through mods. Huh? I don't think ferals want anything except to kill whatever they run across. Oh, well, we here we are at the South Boston Red Rocket. And, I guess... What? No, uh... No caps. No caps to pick up? Are you guys holding out on me here, or what? <laughs> Maybe you were here here very recently. Maybe I was, yeah. I just want to trade a few things. Go ahead. Yeah, sometimes these settlers, when they stand there and look at you like that, that means they want to talk to you for some reason, right? But sometimes it doesn't mean anything at all. <clears throat> yeah, sometimes they're just zoning out and staring into space. Yeah. Exercise sucks. Exercise doesn't suck. Okay, well, it looks like everything seems to be in order here. It's the weight in there gets to you. Why don't you no? sit down instead of standing in the middle of the walkway? Jeez. Evening is drawing near. Hey, you know what would solve that problem? Yeah, get out of my way, mod. A fat man shell. Uh, no. No, you don't nuke your settlers. <laughs> you could nuke your settlers. As long as you remain undetected. 
I don't know, that was one of the things that kind of annoyed me about the artillery pieces, is that because of the way that settlers behave... When they're in combat. Uh, you know, like, they instead of standing behind cover and shooting at enemies and that kind of thing, they actually, even if they are armed with a, with a firearm, they'll go running at that enemy to point-blank range, right? Which means that even if you wanted to uh, target enemies with the uh, artillery units, you end up uh, bombarding your own settlers because they'll actually run into the area that you've got targeted, right? Yep. And then they all get mad at you because you they were dumb enough to actually run into an area that you had targeted uh, artillery at. They treat it the same way that they would if you'd have actually personally shot them, right? Go figure. <clears throat> So yeah, I mean, uh, you know, artillery might be a fun way to make basically the same thing equivalent of a set of guard posts that you assign a settler to. But uh, other than that, I don't really have a lot of use for them just because of that friendly fire issue, right? Yep. And it's not necessarily the, f the friendly fire issue, it's the fact that the way settlers are programmed to react they actually run into harm's way, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I think I was over here recently, too. If I remember right. Yeah, because off camera, the fish packing plant area here, this is where I was supposed to go and kill all those ghouls, right? Yep. But even when I activate it, I uh, don't get... You don't get a quest marker. I don't get a quest marker. Even though I killed like every ghoul in this place, right? But that's a uh, very common and well-known bug that happens with the Radiant Quest sometimes. Yep. And I guess I probably could clear it with a... Uh, console command. Console command if I cared to, but it doesn't really matter that much. Well, will the Brel machine gun, submachine gun, have enough firepower to kill robots? I'm sure it'll do fine. Well, I don't know. You got enough ammo. We'll do a quick save here. We'll see how it does. I'm going to also take more damage now than I normally would because... Uh, you don't have your Lone Wanderer. When my Lone Wanderer perk is working, I actually uh, take, take 30% 30 less damage. That's a, that's a pretty substantial step. Yep, that means robots in here that you encounter could kill you. Yeah. So... And usually the way that I go through this is I tell Ada to wait at the front door here. Because you can't sneak up on anything when Ada is with you. Right? Yep. And also, Ada is one of those uh, hyper aggressive companions that likes to run in front of you and get in the way. Yeah. Oh, hey, the Gatling laser does good work. Oh. She also draws a lot of fire, too, though. That thing yeah. could have snuck up behind you and killed you. Well, thankfully, it didn't do that. Well, now Ada is out of commission. Watch your right. Oh. Yeah, this is a little bit light duty for this. I think we need, uh... We need this.
Ah, that bastard. He found a way to shoot at me again. Yep. He's just gonna keep going sideways along those windows. I'm laying here practically dead on the floor, but we'll just continue with the conversational tone. Yeah, I wonder if I have any uh, robot, robot repair, repair kits. kits. I kind of forgot to... Uh... Yeah, I guess I do have some. Apparently you do. Yeah. Man, if only uh, it were so easy to repair a robot in real life. Yeah. Well, you know what, hey, Ada? What can I do for you? Wait Work here. There. Understood. Please, be careful, ma'am. Yeah, well... I'm sure things will go much better without you hanging around in my back pocket. that doing in there being drinkable apparently yeah because uh, everybody wants their beer to be uh, chilled in a urinal right Can't go through that door. So let's go over this way and see what we can find over here. Yeah, I think that robots are a little bit more heavily armored than uh, other things. Like, I think this submachine gun does a good job of. Uh, um, You'd probably need you know, a, like, a legendary submachine gun to boost damage further. Yeah, like maybe something like a penetrating legendary or something like that. Yep. But at least with the uh, the shotgun here, because it's a technically a rifle, I uh, benefit from the rifleman's uh, perks, uh, armor penetration perks, right? Yep. General Atomics ID card. Okay, that actually works into something else here. Oh, oh I forgot to save before. Yeah, you forgot to save before the evil oh, uh, terminal oh, chair, that's okay. whatever. Got away with it this time. So, anyway, when you read in here, the job assignments. Congratulations on your promotion, Mr. Kincaid. We hope your transition from factory goes smoothly. The on-site supervisor of the General Atomics Galleria will you will be helping to pioneer a new shopping experience for the ex expanding General Atomics customer base. We assure you this will be a comfortable job and will require very little effort or stress on your part. Mm. Your responsibility will be to simply observe the operations of the completely automated staff. We expect very little intervention will be required on your part so as the robotic staff has undergone strenuous testing before being deployed. Thank you for your service to the company. The retirement uh, position. Yeah. Thanks for nothing. I put in years of my life to keep this factory running and this is how they treat me. I'm supposed to babysit a bunch of robots while they play shop. This is ridiculous. They don't think I can see what this is really is. Ageism. I can still do my job as well as any 25-year-old and they all tell me, Mr. Kincaid, it's time to retire. Mr. Kincaid, you should travel. Mr. Kincaid, you should spend time with your family. <laughs> well, I don't want to do any of those things. I want to sit here and run this factory like I have been for years. This job will kill me. I'm literally going to be bored to death, and it will be their fault. Sounds like he's a bit of a workaholic. 
<laughs> yeah. And a little bit bitter about being uh, assigned basically a uh, paperclip straightening job, right? I'm going to try something here too. Um, I'm going to see if uh, slugs are a little more effective against robots too, because I'm guessing that they probably are. As opposed to, you know, multiple projectile buckshot, right? Well, maybe. Uh, or <laughs> maybe uh, it will just prevent damage drop off at range. Maybe. I don't know. Tesla magazine. Yes. What does that do? Energy weapons permanently inflict plus five percent critical damage. Okay. I have a few of those now. Let's see what we got here. Under. Uh, oh yeah, that would be under here. Tesla science, yeah. So if each of those means then that I get a plus 25%, I would assume they stack. Unless each perk level does something different, I don't know. In any case, you get a nice set of bonuses anyways. Yeah. Okay, well, it looks like that's it for up here. Yeah, well, I'm just going to figure that I would try that and just see if I can uh, get a little bit more stopping power out of this shotgun at, uh, you know, like for against robots, because I think robots tend to have pretty high armor ratings too. Yep. See, now, I never have figured out a way to open this door. Right? There doesn't seem to be a uh, terminal anywhere or... You could TCL like through it and see if there's anything back there. Yeah, I think I've done that before. It's just, uh, like... Just a door with nothing beyond it? Well, there's a, a coffee, coffee mug cup. on the computer console. But other than that, well, there's that lunch kit box thingy, right? But as far as I can tell... Those are the only things there. Those are the only things there, and this just seems to have been... I don't know, maybe it was an oversight or something? They, maybe one of these terminals wasn't supposed to be a destroyed terminal? Maybe it was supposed to be a terminal that you could hack to unlock that door or something? I don't know. And you just they need just, they your just, James Bond laser watch. Yeah, they, they just messed that up, that's all. We'll go and have a quick look upstairs here, too. You know, I had a professor, or sorry, a teacher back in high school, back when I was still going through high school, who used to actually cook his lunch and make coffee on a hot plate. Really? Yeah. Yeah, well. I guess when you're a science teacher, you get that as a perk. Hmm. I don't know. I think hot plates were still common enough at one time. I think mainly they've been replaced now by things like toaster ovens and stuff like that. I wasn't even aware hot plates were ever used to prepare food. I think they are kind of like a thing that you would get for uh, camping and that kind of thing, right? No? Ah. Uh, like if you had a holiday, like a little holiday trailer or something, well, instead of having a full-blown stove... You'd use hot plate. Maybe you'd use a hot plate or something powered off of your uh, battery because... Uh, well, maybe it was a feature that... Uh, 
my dad built because he used to build his own holiday trailers, right? Oh, okay. But uh, he used to have a couple of pretty good-sized 12-volt uh, uh, batteries installed in as part of the trailer as well, right? Mm -hmm. And you could run, uh, you know, lights and and a small, you know, like uh, icebox-sized refrigerator and that kind of thing off of it. Although uh, for an inside <laughs> stove, he used to have uh, a propane, you know, like a couple of propane burners, like a stovetop type of thing like that for doing cooking indoors, right? Yep. You know, like if it was pouring rain out and you couldn't, uh, you know, cook over your campfire kind of thing because you couldn't actually keep it burning. Well, I can hear robots. And that one sounds like a bad one. Oh, I think they're all bad. There's one. There's another one there. Check your right. Ooh, yeah, you're right. Take this time to reload. Uh oh. Told you so. No, that's what this is for. If they really want to press me hard. But now it might be time to uh, switch to your Mossberg and reload again. <laughs> yeah, even from this far away. Yeah, really, eh? Hmm. Oh, I guess we need to have a drink of water. <sighs> Man, that drink of water doesn't hardly restore any health at all anymore, does it? Nope, you're going to have <laughs> to use something else. Yep. Well, I guess that's why we carry stim packs, eh? Stimpaks work quite a bit faster now too, because I think I've got a few. Uh, I've got four levels of medic, right? Yep. Yeah, so they finally actually work at a decent pace now. Yeah. stairs here. Found some more bobby pins. Bad I can't just rush out to uh, New Vegas and and uh, hand some of them off? Hand a couple hundred of these off. <laughs> I wonder what the time frame for that is, too. Would you have to go backwards in time in order to be able to do that, too? Yeah, if I remember right, I think uh, the events in Fallout New Vegas take place uh, uh, a few years before this. I don't know. I mean, I think that they display the date here somewhere, right? Yeah, see, it's uh, January 2289 here. Yep. And then, I don't know, we'd have to look at the calendar, look at the uh, display in Fallout New Vegas to find out what the year is.
but I want to say I think there's about a 10 year difference between the two. <laughs> where, are, where, are, where are you, Timmy? <laughs> oh, fuck. The appropriate punishment was separation of the child from any potential source of entertainment. And please remember, corporal punishment is strictly forbidden unless the user enables it in your configuration mode. Please proceed into the second test chamber. Now we gotta eat again here. Hmm. Damn it. A proper user must be able to identify the needs of our charges. Please assess the state of the time child and fulfill its needs. Okay, I think I remember this. I need to know. I know what I need to do here. Adjustable wrench. Uh, no. That's why they had that baby bottle sitting there, right? <laughs> I wonder what that that uh, program would say if you uh, shot the teddy bear with your shotgun, anyway. Loot the room. Yeah. Well, not sure why there'd be a machete in the fridge. To cut meat with, of course. Yeah. Splendidly done. All potentially fatal objects have been put out of a child's reach. Please remember... Children have a penchant for finding ways to arm themselves. They never are truly safe. Absolute diligence is required. Congratulations! It appears you are fully functional and ready to return to service. Please take a replacement fusion core from the safe in the hallway on your way out. Okay. Hey, look at that. All the replacement shit. Yeah. And then this is the uh, terminal I can use to open this door, which goes back out to the entrance again, hey? Eh? <clears throat> okay. Well, now we can get back underway here. So in uh, your 
copy of Fallout 4 even though you haven't actually installed it yet. Hey, I've downloaded it now. Um, does that include uh, all the DLC as well? Like, is it like a game of the year kind of sit to Yeah, I, I do believe it is. I do yeah. believe it is, yeah. Nice. Or one of these days when you decide that you actually have enough idle time to actually try it out. Oh man, you know what? Like, I never have idle time. I tell you, man, I was up until like 7 in the morning last night. <laughs> yes. And then I still had to go through today. There's never enough time. Need to add more time to the clock or what? Yeah, well, we need like a, a 30 hour day or something. That's it. Well, that's good. There was a whole bunch of plasma cartridges in there. For my plasma thrower. Nice. Well, that works pretty good against robots. Yeah, well, it works pretty good against just about everything as far as I can tell. It's just that ammunition for that is fairly uh, uh, uncommon, so don't want to use any more of it than you have absolutely have to, right? Yep. That's one of the another re reason I like shotguns because the damage output is pretty decent most of the time, and also the uh, ammunition is extremely common. Like that's it for this floor. Okay, so unless you want to die, you don't go in those doors there, ever. Oh, no, because there's like three robots inside that room, including that robo brain that uh, you're supposed to be. You know, okay, so it's, it's just a terrible a, idea to go into that. It's room. a terrible idea to go into that room through that door. I mean, maybe if my uh, Lone Wanderer perk was still working and <clears throat> that sort of thing, might be kind of okay. But I will show you a trick. After I'm done uh, over here. After you're done with the dreaded lockpicking minigame. Yeah. Actually, I don't mind the lockpicking minigame in, in this. Got it in this game so much. I know, it's, it's actually, a persistent it's point actually of disagreement. Pretty, it's actually pretty easy. Between you and me. Okay. So, we go into this room here. Right? And you'll notice that there are some holes in the floor here. Yep. Yeah. So, what you do... Drop some frag mines down there. Is... No. I wonder if that would even work. Just drop frag mines from above? Is especially this is particularly easy because I have uh, a, uh, you know, the perk that grants me the throwing arc. Yeah. I have that's okay well let's see how these pulse grenades work And you know what? You might as well use up all these grenades that you. Uh, there you go. Uh, drop a nuka mine from above. Yeah. You know, might as well use up all these grenades that you never really had any purpose for, right? Can you bank them off that little tiny obstacle down there to wow. get into that corner? Where did Maybe. you go? Yep, there. you can. 
So anyway, now that was a stealth kill, by the way. Yep, totally a stealth kill. Yeah, there was no survivors, nobody around to tell. Now you can go in through that door. Just making things a little easier on yourself. Well, because what happened was the very first time I ever came in here, I uh, opened the uh, security doors just like this. And it immediately got gangbanged and, by robots? And immediately got killed by a, a uh, robot that came, uh, you know, flying out of here. Yep. So there's the mechanist device we're after, along with some other miscellaneous stuff. Can't get that. That's okay. Yeah, you see this one here, it's got that nasty claw, just like what Ada has on its arm. Yep, although actually you upgraded Ada, so she has the hammer arm now. Yeah, well, now she's even worse, but still, that's pretty... Uh, A lot of damage. Yeah. Yeah, robots are extremely dangerous, even uh, to high-level characters that are, you know, well-protected. Yep. And of course, those uh, Robo Brain robots are pretty dangerous too, right? Oh, look at that! Found a wow, that's a pretty heavily upgraded Ruger Mark V. That's got just about all the trimmings on it. Well, considering where you found it, it would have to, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, I guess we can go back to where we left Ada at the entrance to this place. At least when you leave her at the entrance, you know exactly where you gotta go to go pick her up again. Yeah, well, the thing is though, like, Ada basically makes any form of stealth impossible, right? The only reason that I ever take Ada along with me anywhere is because... You have it to. Is, it is necessary to, uh, you know, finish this storyline, right? Hey, I'd be happy to help if I can. Come on. I'll get it done. There, I just got the failure <laughs> for killing the ghouls in the fish packing plant, right? God. But there was nothing I could do about that. Yep. Watch Ada. your footing, ma'am. Buildings like this can be quite dangerous. Did yeah. you retrieve something from that robot? I did. A robot with a brain. Have you seen a robot with a brain like that before? No, but my old caravan discovered records about them while we were scavenging military facilities. According to my databanks, it's called the Robo Brain. It was considered one of the most technologically superior robots ever constructed, but the model never reached full production status. Mm, well. It had this strange device on it. Let's have a look. Impressive technology. If my analysis is correct, this is a specialized radar beacon. I suspect it's how the mechanist was keeping track of the robo-brain you destroyed. As the next logical step, I need you to install this beacon within me so we can use it to our advantage. Okay. Sounds like a solid plan. I'm glad you agree. You'll need to use a robot workbench to ensure proper installation, and my presence will be required. To maintain peak efficiency, I strongly recommend that we remain together until a radar beacon is successfully installed. Okay. So I guess now we need to, uh... Speak hey, data again. No problem. Are you ready to install the radar beacon? Yep. It's time. Let's do this. Good. The installation should be simple. Once I'm in the robot workbench, just install the radar beacon and I'll do the rest. Okay. So, Shove thing into slot. Yep, I guess that, uh... Let's see here, we'll have to have a drink of water. Again. There. Um, maybe that will have to wait till the next episode, though, because I think we're well over an hour here, right? We're at one hour, 14 minutes. Okay, that's probably long enough. So, uh... We got through the General Atomics factory got one step further in the quest line got one step further we've actually got a good beginning here so i guess we'll continue on by going and installing the radar beacon in ada in the next episode sounds like a plan yeah until then i'm wreck b5 and i am sandman 99
Have a good one.